Homeschool parents, this is a message for you. As a homeschooler, I know you work hard for us. You have many different things to manage. Our Thinking, Feeling, Willing program is your roadmap to a successful Waldorf homeschool journey. Gain the confidence you need to be the teacher your child wants and transform your homeschool experience. Homeschooling with Waldorf Essentials is one like no other. You not only have curriculum options, you can also add our Thinking, Filling, Willing program onto your curriculum. What's in the Thinking, Filling, Willing program? Rhythm, inner work, temperament, the Waldorf curriculum, learning and strengthening your skills in music, circle time, form drawing, handwork, painting, drawing, modeling, festivals, reading, writing, spelling, your rhythm and movement, and our bonus content. Something else you'll get when you join Waldorf Essentials that you will not find anywhere else is the community, and we all need that as homeschoolers. This is your invitation to fill your cup. We know you're rooting for us. We are rooting for you too. Welcome to this week's podcast. This week we're going to talk about sort of the space about the end of the year. Often moms are like stressed, like here we are, we're recording this the last day of March. And so we are like staring down, at least for the Northern Hemisphere, those last few weeks of the traditional school year. So I want to sort of help you with a couple of things. One, you don't have to follow anybody's schedule but your own. So follow your schedule for your children, something that you set up that works for your family. So maybe you like to take a lot of time off and so you're schooling through the summer. Like we live in Florida and that is a pretty big realization for us is that we really don't wanna like be outside when it's the hottest and the stickiest. And so really we spend a lot more time indoors during then and working on school and in sort of getting those pieces done. So look at your schedule, look at it and, and really decide like what do I need to feel good about finishing up the school year. So, you know, m many of you know that I was, um, I spent some time in the hospital in August, and so that sort of started our school year off to a rocky start. And there were some things that we didn't cover in the beginning that I, I really wanted to. And so that's going to mean for us that we're, we are definitely doing school through the summer. And that's not a big deal. It's really not a big deal. And, it, and if I didn't wanna do school in the summer, guess what, it still wouldn't be a big deal. We would still just work around things. Because remember, this is your homeschool. So if you are like right now thinking, shoot, I, I'm feeling like I don't have enough time to finish things up. Look at what you've got planned. So lay out your plan. And that's why I'm so big on planning because if we don't lay out a plan, then we don't know where we're going. And if we don't know where we're going. We don't actually know when we get there. Have you ever thought about that? Like if you get in the car and you go for a drive and you say, hey, I'm going to XYZ. If you, if you don't know what that destination is, you don't know when you're there. So with regards to homeschool planning, I always like to really look at what we need for our family, look at what things might be going on, where we might need to make some adjustments, and just breathe out because it's nobody's homeschool but mine. And it's the experience that I'm giving to my children. So this weekend, I am looking at our plans and looking at what we have left that we'd like to get covered for this year and what things maybe we can push to next fall because maybe there are things that are not such a big deal to get um, taken care of right now. Things like math are easy to do in the summer, like easy peasy things to do in the summer. Um, things that you maybe you want to like add in some more art. Those are great things to get done in the summer so that you are prepared then for the next school year. But with all of that, like as you're evaluating yourself and evaluating your school year, key, if you have a planning for peace journal, there are forms in there that you can use to kind of just trigger you and get you, not trigger you, but you know, trigger those pieces of like, hey, this is what we need to get done and this is what we can let go of to just sort of give you that calm and that peace. Look at those forms. If you don't have those forms, it's not a big deal. Ask yourself, where am I? What have we gotten done? What do we still need to get done? Have I allowed myself enough time? Have I planned for those things? Because that's really what you're looking at. Like it's, if we have a good plan, 
then we can do anything because we know where we're going. We know what the destination is. We, we might not be able to control those things along that journey, but we definitely know where we wanna be. So think about those pieces, really decide what is it that I wanna get done. And then as you're looking at the last, you know, six or eight weeks of this school year, a traditional school year. Again, you can school as long as you need to. So you're looking at the last six to eight weeks of this Northern Hemisphere school year. Ask yourself, do I feel confident about this direction that I'm going? Do I need to pare back some things? Do I need to ask for some help about condensing some things? Because that's totally fine too. And you know, you can always come to office hours and get help with that because usually I will dive into, okay, so this is your personal thing that you've got going on. You need help condensing say the Norse myth stories or what, like how can you condense some ancient cultures? And it's not about skipping things. It's really just about like, how do you get the most bang for your buck so that you can be really efficient with your time and also make sure that you get the content and that you wanna get in. So really look at those pieces as you're, you know, sort of heading into this next space and ask yourself those questions. Also, like what are your wins? Where have you been this year and how exciting has it been? What fun things have you done with your children? What fun things like have you noticed? You know, we sort of, it's a sort of a Nielsen family, not really secret, but um, my husband is all about Godzilla. <laughs> he loves Godzilla, which is kind of a fun, funny family thing. And so we were sort of laughing because we also, you know, we did ancient cultures in fifth grade, and then in sixth grade, we did our um, our trip, our fake trip that we were planning out for, for our math block, we did it to Greece. And so we were just talking about the Colosseum, just talking about the, you know, the beauty that's there, and we went to see the Godzilla movie, and Godzilla takes a nap in the Colosseum, like all curled up like a dog in the Colosseum. So we we're sort of laughing about that, but that's, those are those fun moments that you want to have with your kids. And as they get older and they get into more things that, you know, maybe you are into or, um, you know, things that are just sort of part of your family culture, those are times to have like just fun and laugh out loud. And, and you know, it will forever be a silly thing about Godzilla taking a nap in the Coliseum because it, it's just this fun, fun and silly space. So what are those fun and silly spaces for your family? And if you don't have them and you're not having a good time on this journey, you're doing something wrong, mama. So we really want to have a good time in this space. This is not about rushing. It is not about, um, you know, it's not about the uh, the the grind of, of just not liking motherhood because this is a fun space. This is a fun space, but we often have to let ourselves have fun. So again, look at your plans and what you've got going for the next six weeks or so. Ask yourself, can I get this? Can I get done what I've laid out here? Do I need to take some more time off? Often in the springtime when you've been schooling since the fall, moms are like, oh, I guess I need to get outside. I need to go do some things. Take some time to do that. Did you take a proper spring break? I mean, you know, usually that's something that happens um, for public school children or children that go to a brick and mortar school. But if you're not taking some time off in the spring to just sort of breathe out and get going then for the rest of the school year and then really have that eye on where your destination is, then you probably wanna make sure you're doing that, especially if you are in the throes of those younger grades where there, you know, feels like there's a lot more work, you're doing a lot more things like working on making sure you have those drawings done, making sure you have all those pieces together. It changes as they get older. You still have those pieces to do, but the, the, the flavor of it starts to change as they're, you know, sixth, seventh, eighth, and all, all of the way up into high school. So you have that to look forward to. It's still work, but it's different. It's different. So again, look at where you're at. Ask yourself if you can, like, stay the course. If you need to take a week or so off, take it off. That doesn't mean you just take it off and do nothing and lay around. It actually means you have to have a plan because if you don't have a plan... <laughs> it will go to hell in a handbasket really fast. So make sure you have a plan, make sure you know what it is that you wanna do and just have fun with your kids. 
have fun in this space. Enjoy your mothering, enjoy your homeschooling. And if you're really struggling and not having a good time, step back and ask yourself, am I doing the things? How's my rhythm? How's my inner work? Do I need to, you know, step back and tend to something for myself? Do I need to ask for help? There's nothing wrong with asking for help. That is so, so important. So make sure that you are taking care of you because if you don't take care of you, guess what? <laughs> You can't take care of people around you. It's sort of like a half-hearted thing when you're doing that then, and you're spending a lot of time in resentment, and we don't want you to spend any time in resentment. We want you to really enjoy this path and really have a good time. Now, also, you know, I'm filming this the end of March, beginning of April. Remember, planning for peace starts at the end of April, and we really want you to be in that space where you have all this beautiful time to get your plan in order, and you're not cramming it in and doing it all at once. So just because we start in April, that doesn't mean we're actually planning lessons at that point. Come and see exactly what we do. Um, but really this, this beginning place for planning is, it's just a beginning. It's a breathing out. It's a, like looking at how you're finishing up this year. And again, uh, those pieces of, well, do I need to shift some things to next year? Do I need to do some extra things in the summer? Like, and, and again, always send things in the summer. Always, always, always. There's often field trips that we didn't get to during the year that we wanted to do in the summer. The trips that, and, and places and things we wanted to see. And sometimes there's just math that needs to happen in the summer because we've been busy doing other things and we want to catch up on those pieces. So remember, it's your homeschool. Come to Planning for Peace. Let's get you started on the next school year. So if you're struggling now, hopefully you won't be struggling this time next year. And remember to have fun with it. And if you're not having fun with it, leave us a comment. We want to know why you're not having fun. We want to we want to help you in that space because that's really how we give them this gift for the long haul. I've been doing this for a lot of years. I can't imagine not doing it. And it's not because I'm a saint or because I have the patience of Job or because I'm always calm. It is because I have a commitment to what I want to bring to my children. And I have a commitment to this space. So... We want to get you your heart in that place because once your heart is in that place, it's much easier to do those other things. It's much easier to not always be the yelling mom. It's much easier to take care of yourself. It's much easier to do those other pieces because you have to tend to that space first. So thanks for joining us today. Again, planning for peace starts soon. Tend to yourself now. Enjoy this journey and we'll see you next time. You know, I get this question a lot. Melissa, is office hours or planning for peace, is it like recorded so that I could just listen to it again later? And here's the answer. No, it's not. And this is why. I really want that to be a safe space. I want that to be a space where you are free to say the things you need to say. You are free to be frustrated with your life, frustrated with your kids, frustrated with your partner, and let us help you pull it all back together and build it back up again because you can't do that if you're worried about somebody listening to it again later. So the answer is no. We don't record our um, live things anymore. Just for that, we really want to protect you. 